Welcome to chapter 3 of tutorial 2 for Collections Managers on SARS. In this tutorial we'll look at the reports available for managing your objects on SARS. We've completed our object, we've completed some condition assessments and valuations and as I say we're not going to deal with gradings because that has already been de dealt with in a previous tutorial. On the Explore menu you can click on Explore itself and you can search for your object. So let's look for TM001 and it will find our object. If there were multiple matches for TM001 you would see the various content types for which this object is a match and then you can filter out more specifically by the content type. So obviously I'm looking for, for objects so I would click on objects and then it would show me only objects with that particular match. If you're doing multiple queries, don't forget to tick Retain Current Filters and then it will keep searching within the object's content type. There are the shortcut searches as well throughout Saurus on the right and bottom right. So if I search for TM001, it will also find the code that way. Any PDFs or Word documents that you upload to Saurus, the text is indexed as well, so you can search within text um, based documents for, for matches as well through the search and that may be relevant to you if you're uploading uh, documents which have been OCR'd or which came digitally with readable text. In By and large most of the time you'll use the objects or OG group objects menus to find objects rather than the search features um, because these views have been customized to allow you to see your objects at a, at a snapshot more easily. Let's go through each one in turn. So the Explore Objects menu gives you these fields as your filters and this shows you all collections that you have access to on Saurus. So this is outside of your collection including your objects that you've created. The Explore Objects listing 2 is also all collections so it's cross collections, cross museums and this just allows you to search by different fields and filter by those. Each of these views can be exported to Excel once you have a list that you would like to, to download. The third option is OG group, group objects, that's organic group objects. This will filter just objects in my museum. So those museums which I am a member of, I will see them listed here. So just bear in mind if you do have membership of more than one museum then you'll see um, more uh, objects than the necessary just in the one museum you, you might have had it in mind. For the fourth option let's have a look at um, the visibility of uh, OG vi visibility bulk up update, the movement register, uh, that's also got an audience update as well. Uh, OG object condition assessments audience update and evaluations report. These bulk updates are quite self-explanatory. Um, they have to do with the organic groups permissions. So if you would like to grant permission to see your um, objects to another museum and they are in private mode, then you can invite another museum and set their memberships up using the vis visibility bulk update option. Just bear in mind you need to be a member of both collections in order to do that. Um, <coughs> then the valuations report I'll deal with in a, in a minute. So let's go back to the first one, objects, explore objects. So on this one we can filter by our code. So let's have a look at codes that start with TM and enter to apply and there we go, there's our test object. This is a, another object that's come through a permit application. The lightbox module serves up the images in 800 by 600 pixels and this is what members of the public have access to so they don't have access to your full resolutions of your images. To download your full resolution images go to explore my content my uploads and you'll see a listing there where you can filter for the JPEGs or BMP files that you've uploaded and you can download the full resolution versions of your images or if you have edit rights over an object click on edit and you can go to the images tab and simply download the full res by right clicking the images there and saving them. 
all these operators can be combined into one massive query so we can combine the code and classified name and common name and local name so if we take the code off and I'll show you what I mean so let's have common name equal to blanket or contains blanket and then let's pick the code for uh, NASMUS so this will just search within the National Museum Bimfontein for blankets and now we see there are 35 matches and there's all the images and the links to those objects. The uh, OG, uh, sorry, the uh, uh, the second listing. This is th uh, this one. This gives us uh, the cultural association field, so we could pick Sutu, for instance, and it will filter out all objects that have been linked to that term. Um, and you can then combine this again with other terms. So this is quite useful pe with, for people with ethnographic collections. The OG, um, OG group objects option. Uh, let's go to that. And this is this one. I think we've covered this already. So that's just within your museum. And the system automatically filters all your organic group permissions. Uh, and that's the one you'll use mostly for your museums. So if you're working within your museum and you're trying to find out things that you have permission to, you're not interested in cross-museum research, go to OG group objects. Okay, the movements log, it's also self-explanatory. This will summarize all the movements in your museum. Uh, again, remember movements are private, so you'll only see movements in your museum, not outside of your museum and you can download this listing to an Excel spreadsheet and then you can filter these various options here to filter out by by date or by the location code or person uh, and then create a little summary list. The valuations report also very similar so this will summarize all the valuations across your collection and you can download that to Excel uh, and it gives you the amounts so this is particularly useful for people who would like to export the valuations report to the accounting package um, so that it can be included in uh, the uh, the assets. And then visibili visibility bulk update works very sim s simply. Uh, you can filter for the code, so let's do TM and start with. Again, this is only things that we have permission to. and I can tick TM001 and I would like to modify and I'm going to change the visibility to private for instance and then hit next and that would run through a batch and I could set a number of objects in my collection to private or I could set a number of objects to public if they've been already set to private or I might add the group audience to two different museums if I had permission to see those two. Okay. Right, so I'm going to close off this tutorial here. That concludes the objects um, tutorials. There are templates, Excel templates, under the frequently asked questions. So go there and you'll see the bulk upload sites, recordings and objects frequently asked question. And here you will find the templates which are set up in Excel and you can fill out your objects in Excel and send those to sarasadmin at sara.org.za for import. We will be adding templates for valuations and for condition assessments as well. So you don't need to uh, create them on SARS online necessarily but the advantage of doing them online is you retain the full revision vision history um, and there are a lot of extra features which you don't get necessarily with using Excel but for those of you that have very very poor internet connections or no internet connection at all at least there are the offline versions of SARS where we've uploaded all the, te the terms as well as drop downs to the Excel sheets and uh, it, it works pretty well so fill it out there and send it on to, to us and we'll import it for you. Thank you very much.